Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, President. Uh, after 15 Dorothy Dixons from the government this week on the China Free Trade deal, I have some real questions for the minister representing the Minister for Trade, Senator Payne. Minister, the government has claimed this week that the China Australia Free Trade Agreement, if signed, will immediately create tens of thousands of jobs and add billions of dollars to the Australian economy. Given that trade is a major component used in the measurement of GDP or economic growth, can the minister explain why the supposed rivers of gold from Chafta are not, are not factored into Treasury forecasts for economic growth? The Minister for Human Services, representing the Minister for Trade and Investment, Senator Payne. Um, On my thank right. You, thank you very much, Mr. President, and I thank Senator Wish Wilson for the question. Uh, of course, I should imagine, Senator Wish Wilson, that if uh, forecasts for the free trade agreement had been factored into Treasury's forecasts on, uh, on growth, you would have criticised us for doing that before the free trade agreement was ratified. So, in, uh, in, uh, in addressing the, uh, the question, uh, Mr. President, I think it's uh, been demonstrated repeatedly in the chamber this week, not just by me, but by Senator Brandis by Senator Scullion today, by Senator Birmingham, by a number of the ministers in the chamber, that in all of those portfolio areas, in all of the issues that we've discussed in the chamber this week, that the potential under the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement is absolutely enormous. Whether it is the Financial Services Council, Mr. President, the National Farmers Federation, Mr. President, all of those peak bodies which are looking with extreme interest at what they will be able to do in their sectors, but more importantly, what the damage to their sectors will be if the free trade agreement is not signed this year. We know, Mr. President, Pause that there the will be. Senator Wish Wilson. I ask why these, this, so, this potential is not factored into Treasury forecasts for economic growth. That, that's what I ask. If it's real, if it's not baloney, why not put it into Treasury forecasts? Order. Just excuse me, Senator Wish Wilson. Uh, Senator Wish Wilson, I think the minister um, had only got into a question. She got halfway through. Uh, that was one portion uh, of your question. I think the minister has been directly relevant, especially up front with her answer, Minister. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I was uh, speaking about the uh, potential uh, uh, impact on Australian business and industry if the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement is not signed this year. Because if it is signed this year, Mr. President, then there is a bonus at the end of this year for our exporters and a bonus at the beginning of next year for our exporters, for their businesses, for the sorts of businesses like I spoke about in the chamber this week, Ensotec and RBK Nutraceuticals, Mr. President, both of whom are exporters from Western Sydney. But if we don't want to talk about Western Sydney, we can even talk about Tasmania. I, I know that Senator McKim this week was uh, waxing lyrical about all the wonderful produce Pause that's clock. exported. Point of order, Senator Wish Wilson. President, 17 seconds left to go. Why aren't these trade deals factored into Treasury forecasts for economic growth? Well, <laughs> order. <coughs> order. On the point of order, Senator Wish Wilson, I think the minister did address that up front with her answer. Minister, you have 17 seconds in which to answer the question. Uh, as I said uh, about all the wonderful produce from uh, Tasmania, it is ironic indeed, Mr President, that his fellow Tasmanian colleague doesn't seem to want to get, provide opportunities for Tasmanian business to actually send that into the Chinese market, Australia's largest market, and, the grow and growing at 20 per cent uh, Thank you, per annum, Minister. Mr. The time for answering the question has expired. Senator Wish Wilson, a supplementary question. President, at Senate estimates earlier this year, I asked the Deputy Head of Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade why they don't share their national interest analysis uh, outlining the benefits of these trade deals to the Australian economy with Treasury. The answer I got was that, in an economy-wide perspective, these deals would not be significant enough to alter Treasury forecasting of GDP. Does the Minister not agree with the Department of Defence, Foreign Affairs and Trade? Minister. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Sorry, that's a foot of mine. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I don't actually think that what uh, Senator Wish Wilson has uh, indicated, Mr. President, is inconsistent with anything I've said in relation to the China Australia, Australia Free Trade Agreement in any of the discussions that's been in the chamber this week by me or any other member of the uh, government, Mr. President. Thank you, Minister. Senator Wish Wilson, final supplementary question. 
President, uh, Minister, the investor state dispute settlement chapter and chapter does not appear to have been finalised, which is unprecedented. Can the government guarantee Australia will not be sued by Chinese companies for simply changing policy or laws in the public interest? Could, for example, the Shenhua Watermark coal mine use strategic ISDS litigation to challenge changes to future state and federal environmental laws that impact on their investment? Order on my right. Order. Minister. Um, thank you very much, Mr. President. I think it's really important to be very clear about the ISDS uh, provisions uh, in this agreement. What the ISDS provisions in the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement do, Mr. President, is provide a mechanism for Australian or Chinese investors to pursue international arbitration based on a claimed violation of the national treatment commitment in the investment chapter. ISDS does not protect an investor from a mere loss of profits following a change in government policy or regulation. ISDS also does not prevent a government from changing its policies or regulating in the public interest. And investors should understand the relevant regulatory environment before they commit to making their investments. Pause the clock. What modern ISDS the... mechanisms? Order on both sides. Senator Wish Wilson. Point of order, President. I did back up my question with with an example. That's true. But the primary question was: Could the minister guarantee Australia will not be sued? by strategic litigation with ISDS. Uh, thank you, Senator Wish Wilson. Uh, the, the minister has been addressing the question, not necessarily that specific portion. Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. What I'm trying to do is to explain to Senator Wish Wilson and to the Chamber these aspects of the ISDS. And I think where I was, Mr. President, was saying that modern ISDS mechanisms incorporate explicit safeguards to reaffirm the right of governments to take decisions in the public interest, including in the areas of health and the environment, which Senator Wish Wilson refused to, and reduce chances that foreign investors expired. bring frivolous claims. Order on my left.